Hi there. So, um, let's get started with David. I just added the have a sit pack, and um, I'm pretty sure I don't have to show you how to add it because you probably will do it through the the Epic Games launcher. So you won't have to move around some some folders like I had to. Um, so that should be pretty clear. In case it's not, then just shoot me a message, and I will do a a tiny tutorial on that as well. Okay, so um, in general, we are having the the David skeleton over here. So that's what we have. And over here we have all our bones. I have to Yeah, so this way it's it's a bit better readable. Um and and those bones make up the the actual like yeah, a real skeleton for the character where the the skin, the the body is bound to and, and that's making it uh possible to, to move it. I'm pretty sure you, you know a bit about that system. Um why I'm telling you this is because we are now great painting skills, but I hope you can understand better what, what's going on that way. Uh, just a simple example. Let's let's imagine we. Oh god, <laughs> that was super. Okay, um, I have to take a more straight line, otherwise it looks really bad. Um, so let's imagine we're having two simple legs and one character is having wait I'll do it like that let's give him a hat okay So let's assume this is David. And this here is the Unreal Engine 4 skeleton. Because when we have a pack from the marketplace, we always have it based on the Unreal Engine 4 mannequin. So the animations are using this skeleton of the mannequin and your David is using a different skeleton and that's the reason why you can't simply um, reuse those animations. Um, I mean th that's also an, an, a reason for why my wife and I worked some time on getting this um, to work basically that she is able to rig characters uh, to the official Unreal Engine 4 skeleton from, from the mannequin. When this is done that way properly, then you can just reuse all those animations without having to do any additional steps. You can just use them, basically. Uh, but in case for David, for example, we are having a facial rig and therefore we need a custom skeleton that's not possible with the Unreal Engine 4 mannequin skeleton. And um, so, yeah, we are forced to to use this custom skeleton and to go, I don't want to say the hard way, but not the easiest way <laughs> of re reusing the animations. Um, so, yeah, back to topic. We are having our David with his uh, custom skeleton and we are having the Unreal Engine 4 mannequin skeleton. And... Ooh, where was my pain? There. So, uh, I do it now just simple. And assume we are having like. Why is there no fill? Now oh, there's some. Like um, three spine bones. I'm just separating them by there's red dots and maybe there the clavicles follow something like that okay so you get the idea we're having like three bones for the spine and now let's imagine just just um, in the theory 
David has three, four, five spike boats. I mean, it's possible, it's just giving you more flexibility for the character. So the issue is now that the animation has data for for those bones, you know? Um, and the animation won't know where to apply its its rotation and such when there are completely different bones in the other skeleton, you know? So uh, we have to do now a kind of conversion from one to the other skeleton so the animation understands how to drive this different skeleton to achieve the same end results or at least um, very similar results. Um, so yeah, that's that's the idea behind that. And what we do basically is for our Davids, let me take the eraser quick. Not clean, but should do it. <laughs> our David has a T pose right now. And there we're coming to another thing. The Unreal Engine 4 skeleton is like this. And um, the, the process of the so-called retargeting, which we're using to make this work, tells the animation in the first step, okay, this bone is equal to this bone, for example. Means when this bone is told to, like, for example, um, rotate a 30 degree in this direction, so th the character is like bending to the to the left um, from his view. Then we are telling this bone to do the exactly same because we say, okay, it's in almost the same location. So when we bend this bone as well, then it should give us the same end result somehow. And um, the same, for example, for this bone, which should be somehow similar to this and this to this. So we, we define all those bone um, like links. Uh, so it's it's clear which bones are in a equal position or, or function. And then we have to move the David skeleton or the Unreal Engine 4 skeleton, one of, of both, in the pose which the other has. So they're in the same pose. Uh, the idea behind that is when we are, let's imagine we are, we are having a character who's waving with his left hand. Then the wave animation like wants to bring up the arm like this and, and then we are doing a wave animation. You know? Um, so it's basically having a, a angle here of I don't know, thirty degree well well, ninety, okay, when I <laughs> look at it like that. Um, but no matter it's it's moving the arm up by this let's say 90 degree from the reference pose imagine we are having a wrong reference pose then it's rotating up the arm by 90 degree to to wave with the hand and um, that would look terrible so we have to go in a hopefully identical but that's usually not possible but uh, as identical as possible pose with both both uh, characters so um, they have like a a common reference pose a common starting point for uh, copying over the animations hope this makes sense in case you're unsure about something then for sure ask me um, but that's that's the idea behind the process so um, yeah Let's get started. Uh, another thing, a special case is basically our um, our sorry, our back. Now I was searching for the word in my hand. <laughs> sorry, um, 
Uh, the, the back basically has also a skeleton and um, we are having a bunch of, of bones there. I'm, I'm sure you had a look at that already. I'm just simplifying it now a bit. Um, and we could, for example, tell or, or do a animation retargeting as well and uh, just link this spine bone with the, the back spine bone, for example. Uh, not, not back spine bone, excuse me, the back root bone where uh, the full back is attached basically. So whenever the spine is moving somewhere, the full back is following. But I don't think that's the best way of doing it because it's really just a small attachment, a small, um, yeah, a small back. Uh, so I will show you a other way of doing this so it's super easy to use later on um, and you can also apply animations to the character and, and the bag is just following you you don't have to carry uh, care about um, having the same animation on the back so it's following properly I, I mean that's that's a bit of a pain especially when you're doing maybe something like sequences cinematics and such that it's easier to just make it follow but okay let's get started with the actual process. Let's do it first for the Unreal Engine 4 characters since here it's way easier to to do. The first thing we do, uh, I was probably a bit fast with opening uh, things here. Jump into the have a sit pack, go to mesh and open the skeleton. And now open the retarget manager tab over here. Now go down where you have select rig and go to select humanoid rig. This is basically a preset um, of expected bones. It expects a root bone, pelvis, three spine bones and such. And now we can hit the auto map button which is automatically searching for the needed buttons based on their naming conventions in the skeleton and assigning them to the um, like this profile of a skeleton which is used for a human um, character and this way for the Unreal Engine for uh, skeleton everything is already assigned perfectly since all the namings are perfect um, it's all it's all done right and this is just telling the retargeting process okay for the pelvis bone use obviously the pelvis bone but maybe you're having a different skeleton like the David character and then it's maybe not the pelvis bone maybe it's called different that's something we are getting to in a minute but yeah we, we are having like uh, a profile now about the, the skeleton um, now jump back to the skeleton tree go to options and select show retargeting options and it's important to make sure the root and pelvis are set to animation. For the Unreal Engine for a mannequin skeleton, it's always done like that automatically uh, because it's like preset by Epic Games, um, so things are, are done correct. Um, and everything else has to be skeleton. You'll see in a minute how we do that on the David skeleton because there it won't be preset. In case it's not done correctly here then you can do it the same way as we do it for David okay uh, oh one last thing we might should do is mm, yeah okay that's fine uh, we have to make sure there's a preview mesh set and um, over here it's set otherwise a apply to mesh button appears down here. Uh, in case there's such a button on your end then just hit it and save and you're good. This is just defining this model as default preview mesh for the for the skeleton. Um, I mean it's not having any functionality actually. It's just needed to complete the retargeting process for the animation slider otherwise it's spitting out the error. So yeah, 
necessary. Ah, over here we have this. You see the button here? Just hit it and save and we are good. Now let's jump into uh, the retarget manager again. Uh, in case I was too fast again. <laughs> let's go into the David folder, mesh, and now select the SK David skeleton. It's important to have the skeleton active because you can also have the, the mesh open where you have all the, the, the facial blends and such and the materials. But um, there you won't be able to access the retarget manager tab and you won't be able to go to the skeleton and such. So on the top right you have like the multiple not versions of, of um, the character. Maybe let's call them the, the, the multiple parts or the different parts like the physics asset, the actual mesh, the skeleton and um, for others there's also the, the animation blueprint and the animation um, part so yeah always make sure you're on the skeleton um, so let's head over to the retarget manager we select a humanoid rig to have our profile for the expected bones and now we have to find all the bones we need to make this work okay so we have something which is called master I think that's what we'll use for the root even though for the Unreal Engine 4 character the root is on the floor but the important part is I mean we can also use reference or no I think that's rather the pelvis okay um, for the root it's important that it's the actual root of the whole character um, so for example when you move or rotate the root it's moving the whole character and that's maybe needed in some animations so let's pick the master over here for the root for the pelvis we are using the reference I think, wait or is it maybe the hips could be the hips. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Let's let's use the hips for pelvis. I think that's closer to the Unreal Engine skeleton. Okay. Now the spines. It's a tricky part because there are no such spines. Oh, there, there they are. Okay. Now we actually have more spine bones than um, with the Unreal Engine. So now we have to check which one we can skip. <laughs> Let's see. I'll try to have them in equal positions. Maybe I, I use spine one as spine one and then this one is a short one here. Three and four. One, three and four. That would be maybe the solution. So they're in somehow equal positions in the body. Spine one, spine three, spine four. Okay. Next, we need the clavicle. Okay. Uh, as you can see, it's always good to have this in a second tab open, so you can always check how the bones are aligned there and, and so you can try to yeah basically rebuild it okay it's it's called the shoulder of here right yeah, and there there the arm is going to the right okay 
So we need the shoulder. Left clavicle, left shoulder, and I'm doing the same for the right shoulder as well. So we have this set up already. Now we're having the left arm and the right arm for the upper arm. Right arm, I think. Yeah, right. Okay. Next one is the lower arm. Let's see what we have here. I think it's the left forearm. Now let's let's go for the left forearm. Oh well, I messed it up. Right forearm over here and the left one over here. Left forearm. And now we need the hand. I think that should be pretty obvious. Okay, so next one, the neck, that should be easy as well, let's see, there we're having the hat. Now the question is where we are having the better results, um, maybe when, when using this neck. It's not making much of a difference. So let's, let's use the neck one since it's in a more similar position um, compared to uh, the, the only neck called one. Okay, head is head. That should be correct. Yeah, okay. Now the thick. Um, okay. collapse the spine over here so we're having a bit better of an overview. It's called the right or left up leg. Same again for the right so we can do them simultaneously. Now calf. It's just called right leg. Is that right? Yeah, it's the right leg. Okay. Oh well, I messed it up again. With right and left. So here we need the left leg. And now we need the foot. That should be easy as well. safe also otherwise probably things get lost and now um, 
we have the base setup basically done um, and there's also a advanced setup I'll go on now without doing the advanced part it's about setting every single finger bone and such and let's see how things are going and in, key, in case I'm, I'm having time left I still can do this part but it's nothing else than what we just did just quick looking for for index 0 1 and the left hand checking where it is um, on, on this character and then finding the similar bone for the David character that's that's all of the magic just putting in all those bones yeah and there are some others for the twist that's maybe something we can do quick because that's a bit more important for um, a, a clean animation um, so Where is it beginning? Here. Lower arm twist. That was where's the, the left? Oh here, here to the left. Okay. Lower arm twist. I think that should be this one. Right. Left forearm roll. Left forearm roll, and let's do the right one as well. Right forearm roll, and now we have the left arm roll, which should be the upper twist. Twist, okay. It's something completely different on this end. Not sure if this will work, but let's see. Okay. Then maybe let's do the ball. Have a ball? No, fortunately, <laughs> could be that easy. Foot, toe base. Okay. Half twist. Leg roll. Okay. I messed it up again. <laughs> left now. Leg roll. Okay. And then a thick twist is the up leg roll. That's something I just checked by accident. Um, left up leg roll. Right up leg roll. Okay. Let's see if we're having those IKs as well. I don't think so. But they shouldn't be too important for those static animations. Should be an issue. Okay, so we have that. Now, 
let's go to the front view you can see over here in the top left you're having perspective and just select front uh, since it's a great help to post the character oh well front okay so and this way you can switch between them and see where the differences are and how you have to align your arms and things like that so what we do now is we go to our to our arm somewhere here it should appear right shoulder right arm make sure you're having snap for the angle maybe to 5 degrees so it's smaller and now we just move it down let's go for 45 degree that's good okay let's do the same with the left arm 45 degree and um, what do we do next maybe the hands a tiny bit down here the hand 10 degree I think that looks good And degree okay just for security purposes to not lose this pose go to your target manager modify pose use current pose this assigns our current pose as um, reference pose for retargeting you can click hide pose to get back to our T pose and uh, now we can go on just save it and this way you won't lose your current progress just to make sure <laughs> okay now we are jumping quick to the top view because those arms are also angled here so we need the forearm yeah okay just making sure it's it's the right bone bad twenty that's good twenty let's see if it's looking good in the front view still yeah, nice, okay. I think that should be good. Now let's continue to the legs because they are in a different pose as well. You see, they're more wide um in a more wider pose. For the mannequins so we have to move them out and that's a bit the more tricky part uh, because when we are moving them out they're sliding off the ground so we have to move it back to the ground a bit but doable so let's collapse the spine stuff so we are at the upper leg I think five degrees is always enough for it yeah, it's it's just five degree, five degree out, and now we go down to the left foot, move it just five degree back to make sure it's lining to the ground again, and the right foot as well. Okay, it's looking good. It's 
hard to see any reference. I think we are having the pivot point in a in a other point than for the mannequin. So it's not making sense to move him down a bit. Uh since you anyways have to realign him in the scene so feet are on the ground and then it won't matter if here uh is one centimeter um like in a height difference to the to the T person or not. So it's it, it won't matter we we have to move him. Uh, we, we won't have to move him. So go to the retarget manager again, modify pose, use current pose. Okay. Now the magic moments. Uh, quickly hit save all in case there is something open. We, we have saved all then and are sure it's okay. Now let's go into our David, a new folder and call it animations so we have things a bit organized. Let's jump into our have a set pack animations ground and uh, let's yeah just start yeah looks good okay so we say okay we need this animation so we do right click retarget animations duplicate animations then select our David skeleton. I'm, I'm, yeah, curious if this works now since he's in a different position, but it should work. So let's see. Change. Um, this is just the target folder, so we are using David animations. And hit retarget. Okay, seems like it worked legs are still looking a bit bad so yeah that's the difficult part with the animation retargeting we have to start now modifying our our poses and our skeleton and such to make this work oh wait I think I forgot something Wait, wait, wait. I just deleted the animation again, so we're having a clean starting point. And now jump in the David skeleton again. We forgot to do the, the definitions for um, our bones. Hit options, show retargeting options, and you see this is all set to animation. Do a right click on the master bone and do recursively set translation to retargeting skeleton. This is the important part because this is then setting all the bones to skeleton, and that's what we need. And then we just set the master and the reference, which is our pelvis. No, the hips are our pelvis, so we are setting the hips as well to animation. There's three in this case, so it's just root and pelvis. And since this is in between, let's take animation for this as well for now and see how the result is going and now let's retarget the animation again and see how it's looking let's hope it's better way better I think right also his his neck is not looking that, that off and the feet are now, now properly and, and like um, not not bent and the arms as well I think this result looks pretty nice already great okay so that's basically the way you can do it for for almost not almost for every animation which is done for a humanoid character you can just use this retargeting um, system and, and bring those animations to the David character. And um, you, yeah, let's imagine you're having a different pack which is using a different character or a different skeleton. Um, then just do the, the retargeting process or the, let's call it the profiling process where you're defining all the bones and, and, and such for this other skeleton as well which is coming with the animations 
and then you can retarget again. So that's that's the idea behind this process. Now, just quick, because I think cinematics will be very interesting to you. Um, let's. Yeah, I, I retarget now the third person idol as well, just for the purpose of showcasing some things here. Perfect. And then I'll create a level sequence. Just yeah, do it here. That's okay. Now, um, no, I don't need a camera actually. But what we we'll do here, I, I just move this out of the screen for now. We will create now a blueprint. Just go into, like, for example, a David or do a new folder or something. Blueprint, or do a right click and then select the blueprint class and select actor. We call this BP David and open it. Now we add a skeletal mesh and call it David. And here on the right, you select for the skeletal mesh our SK David. So he's in here. And now select or add another component of type skeletal mesh and call it back. I mean, you can call them over here however you want. Um, so this has no real functionality. And for the skeletal mesh, you select now the back. And now we have over here a parent socket input. Click the scope. And now we search for, let's see. Which which bone is the the perfect bone for attaching the, the back? You can see this this tiny shape here in his in his glove. This is like um, done for for the back. So this is the place he has to go to. So we have to search now for a bone which is as close as possible to this location here. So. Um, it will look good when the character is bending over to the front or back and the back is attached here. Maybe spine one. No, I think spine no, spine two is high, right? Let's let's go for spine one. Um, and now back to our blueprint. Go to parent socket and click scope and search for the spine one bone. Okay. And this attached now our our back to our character. We just have to rotate it and move it now to be in a in a nice position. In case it's snapping like this, just turn off snap over here which is sometimes really helpful to um, yeah, move things in a, in a correct position. Also, over here the camera, you can move it down to 1. This way you can move it way slower and more precise compared to rushing through the scene with uh, speed 4. Okay, now it should be should be good. Okay, perfect. And now, um, what we have to do is we have to make the back follow the animation. Wait, did I do a mistake?
Let me let me quick check a few things um, and see where we get the better results. Um, That's not beautiful here. For sure we can do things like a workaround where we scale the back bit up to make it a bit bigger and then it's um it should lay um over the over the the cloth. But Let's see for my other possibility. Okay, here it's looking way better. Um, now my alternative approach. You don't have to do what I do now. I'm just testing something quick. For the purpose of this test, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's the issue. Okay, uh, what I just did is um, a usual like best practice when you're working with a character with um, with attachments like uh, clothes which is like if, if you're having a, a dressable character for your game where you can select different t-shirts and whatever or, or buy armor for your RPG character or, or stuff like that then those things are rigged to the exactly same skeleton as the character and then you can use this master pose component feature to just copy over the, the animation to the similar skeleton of the clothes and such but since we are having different skeletons for back and character it's not working like this so we have to use the the bone based attachment Okay, so let's see again when we are going for this animation here. It's pretty awkward that it's happening like this. I mean, <laughs> don't like it that much. Let's see what's happening if we're moving back up a bit. It's happening in the back a bit. Now let's see. Things are getting yeah, better but not good. Okay. Last try. What's happening if I attach it to the spine itself? Instead of spine one. I think that's a even bigger issue. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So spine one is probably the best choice. Let's scale it up a bit like this. Let's 
let's see what's happening then. I mean, I'm pretty sure you you won't see the character like this in the game, and and it's it's rather like even like this maybe it's filling still the the full screen, so you won't recognize the bag is a tiny big bit bigger. Now things are looking way, way better. Um, so that probably would be the solution for, for the problem. Okay. Now we set this animation mode to use custom mode. This is important to make use of it in the level sequencer. Let's jump back to the level and drag in our blueprint into the level. Okay. And now just a simple example. What I want to show you is you can now select the David character, add track, add actor to sequencer, and add David, add BP David. Um, so you're having now your blueprint in your sequencer and you can add a animation track to it just to the blueprint and then the the whole blueprint is basically doing what you want it to to do based on your animation selection here so we are for the first step going for a idle let's move him a bit down so he is touching the floor Oh well. Okay, that's that's okay for now. So he is doing his idle and now you say okay I want him to lay down and you add your lean back animation for sure can do I'm pretty sure there's a, a transition animation in the in the pack so you can make him properly sit down but um, and I'm, I'm sure you also played already with the sequencer system but what I wanted to show you is that now the the bag is properly following the, the body otherwise when you're just using um, separate mesh then you're really having a pain of making the, the back follow the body when doing different animations and this way you just have to yeah you, you don't care about the back you just do the animations and um, on, on sorry I was confused about um, mistakenly pressing a button and then a keyframe appeared um, you just ap apply the animation to the the actual character and the bag is just following and you can just do your thing so yeah that's that's the idea so this video was growing now really in length um, but I hope I I did give you a good overview and a good um, starting point for for yeah getting the animation retargeting going also give finger retargeting a try right now we are always having like this the static hands since I wasn't setting up the the advanced tap um, fully for the fingers when doing the retargeting um, profiling thing so give this a try and in case you have issues there then let me know but normally it should work yeah, without any issues as the other retargeting it was working as well. So, yeah, let me know and otherwise have fun with uh, your animations and a character.